All right, today's video is going to be on subtracting integers. Um, we're going to model it first, and then we're going to um, give a rule. So um, this, uh, hopefully you'll be able to understand at least one of the models, and then hopefully the rule will come from that, and that'll help you. This may be one of the hardest concepts to get your mind around, and it may take a while. So you really want to be patient with yourself and understanding it. It may take some time and some practice, but we'll work on this in class a lot, and I think that eventually you'll get it, and, um, and you'll feel real good about yourself when you get it, and um, that'd be great. All right, so let's start. Um, subtracting integers, we're going to model. First of all, we're going to model integer chips, okay? Remembering that red is negative and yellow is positive. So if I have 6 minus 4, I have 6 yellow chips right here, and I want to take away 4. Well, the 4 is positive, so I can take away 4 positive chips. I can do that because I have 6 of them. So I just go 1, 2, 3, 4, and the answer then is going to be is equal to 2, 2 positive. Okay? The next one, I have 4 minus 6. This time I have 4 yellow chips, and i got to take away 6 yellow chips, but I don't have, I only have 4 of them. So what do I need to add? I need to add um, uh, 2 zero pairs, right? So I add 2 reds and 2 yellows. And I've just added zero, so anytime you add zero to anything, it still stays the same. So now I have four, uh, six yellow chips. And so I'm going to take away six yellow ones. So I can take away one, two, three, four, five, six. And I have two left, except they're red. So my answer to this is four minus six is a negative two, because I have two red ones left. Okay, let's try another one. Negative six minus four. That means I start with six red chips. I have to take away four yellow ones. That's a positive 4. Remember, when there's not a sign there, that means it's positive. So again, I have to add, this time I've got to add four zero pairs. So here's, I'm going to do one, two, three, four yellows, one, two, three, four reds, and now I have, uh, now I have four yellows that I can take away. I'm going to scratch them out, and what I have left is six plus four reds, which is ten. But it's negative 10 because, um, because it's the red. Okay? All right, let's do another one. Now I have negative 4 minus a negative 6. Now, sometimes you'll see some books and some people put parentheses around that second number just because there's two negatives and they want to kind of separate those two negative signs or minus signs or opposite signs, whatever you want to call them. You won't always see that. Um, and sometimes it might be helpful for some of you, some it might not be. But I just want to at least address it or let you see it so that don't be a, it's not, it's not, it doesn't mean to multiply like sometimes I think parentheses are. Here it's just they're just trying to separate those two negative signs. Okay, so here I have negative four, I have four red chips, and I want to take away six red chips. Well, I almost have six, so I've got to add two more zero pairs to get six reds, right? So if I have that, if I add two more zero pairs, I can now take away six red chips. And I'm left with two red, two yellow chips. So my answer is positive two. All right, the next one is five over here. I have six six yellows, and I got to take away four reds, um, any reds at all. So I've got to add four zero pairs. Okay, there's my four reds. Here's my four yellows. That's my four zero pairs. Again, it didn't change a thing. This still equals another way to write positive six. But now I've got to take away four reds. So I take away those four reds. I'm left with ten yellows, so that's going to be equal to a positive ten. Okay? Next one, I've got six red chips, and I've got to take away four red chips. Well, easy, easy, because now I have, I have four red chips for sure, and that leaves me with two red chips, so that equals a negative two. Okay? Two more to go here. Here I've got negative four, I've got four red chips, and I've got to take away six positive chips. So I go ahead, now I've got to write out six zero pairs. Let's see if I can do this all at the same time. Oh, good. Three four, five, and six. So now I've got six zero pairs, which is the same thing as negative. That's another way to write negative four, all that. But now I get to take away six reds, six yellows, I mean. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And now I'm left with two, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten reds. So I'm left with negative ten. Okay? All right, last one in this section. I've got four yellows, and I've got to take away six reds. So same thing, I don't have any reds at all. So now I've got to add six zero pairs. One, two, three, four, five, six zero pairs. And I've got to take away six reds. So I've got to take away all the red chips I just put on. 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and I've left with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 yellow chips, so it's going to be equal to positive 10. Okay, that's with the chips. All right, now we're going to switch gears and we're going to go ahead and use heaps and holes. Okay, demonstrate how to model with that. All right, so with the heaps and holes, we're going to remember the heap is on top is positive, the heap on the bottom is a hole, so it's negative. So here we have um, 6 minus 4. So I've got 6 heaps on top, and I've got to take away 4 heaps, 4 positive. So I can just go ahead and erase 1, 2, 3, 4, and I'm left with 2. So my answer there is going to equal 2, and they're above the, the line, so it's positive. Here I've got 4, and I've got to take away 6, but I don't have 6, I only have 4. So I'm going to add 2 more heaps on top, but if I do that, I've got to add 2 heaps on the bottom, because that's like your 0 pair. So now I can take away 6 all on top, because it's positive 6. I'm left with 2 on the bottom, so the answer there is negative 2. Okay, here, you notice these are the same problems, by the way. So the answers are going to be the same. So the goal is here is not to find the right answer. The goal that you want to be thinking about as we're doing this is to make sure you understand how we're doing it, okay? So the next one is negative 6. That's 6 on the bottom. I've got to subtract 4 on the top. Well, I go over here, use this space to do your adding and stuff. So I've got to add 4, so the only way I can add 4 is to add 4 zero pairs, okay? So now it says negative 6, and I've got to take away 4 on top. Well, I take away the 4 I just wrote down, which is okay, because there are 0 pairs. And now I understand I have 6 on the bottom, so that's negative 10. All right? Next one, I have negative 4, so I have 4 on the bottom. I want to take away 6, but I don't have 6 on the bottom. 6 on the bottom, I'll take away 6. Negative, so I've got to put on 2 more. If I put on 2 more, I've got to also add 2 more on top to make the 0 pair. Now I can take away the 6 on the bottom, so I'm left with 2 on top, so the answer there is positive 2. Here I've got 6 on top, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I've got to take away 4 negatives. I don't have any on the, on the bottom, so I've got to extend this a little bit. I've got to do 1, 2, 3, 4, and I've got to put on the 0 pairs on top. I've got to take away 4 on the bottom, and now I see I'm left with 10, but they're all on top, so it's positive 10. Similarly here, I've got negative 6 I've got to start with on the bottom. I've got to take away 4, negative 4. So that's easy. I just take away 1, 2, 3, and 4, and I've got negative 2, so my answer there is negative 2. All right, two more to go here. I start with negative 4, 4 on the bottom. I've got to take away 6 on the bottom. Well, I've got to, that means I've got to put 2 more on the bottom here, but I've got to also put 2 more on the bottom on the top. Now I can take away 6 on the bottom, so I take away those 6. I'm left with equaling 2, but they're on top, so it's a positive 2. Okay, this time I start with 4 on top. This time I've got to take away 6 on the bottom, but I don't have any on the bottom. So I've got to put 6 on the bottom here. But to make it equal, right, I've got to, put, I've got to add my 0 pair, so I've got to add 6 on the top. So now I've got 4 on top, I've got to take away 6 on the bottom, so I take away all those I just put on, but that means I have 10 on top, and they're positive, so it's positive 10. Okay, so that's chips, and that's holes, heaps and holes. Now let's do the number line. And this may be a little tricky for some of you, but we do want to go through it just to make sure you understand and have a little bit of familiarity with it, because you might see a question like this on an assessment, so you make sure you understand how to use the number line. All right, so same problem. So I'm going to have the same answer. So again, the, the thing I want you to understand is how to do it, how to manipulate all this. One thing to understand with the number line is you always want to start in the positive direction, have that positive attitude. But anytime you see a negative, a minus sign, a negative, an opposite, whatever you want to call it, you turn the opposite way. So we'll demonstrate this, okay? For number one, we have 6 minus 4, okay? So I start, you always start with 0 because you always start on, you don't have anything at all. And the first thing you do is you have 6. So you go up to 6. Okay, right, I'm not going to be exact, but anyway, go up 6. Then you want to go, so I'm, I'm going to face a positive direction. I'm thinking positive to the right, but then i got a minus sign. So oh, i got to turn the opposite way, and i got to go down 4. So if you think about that, you go down 4, and you land on 2. Now, some of you, it might be better just to do it on the number line, and that's fine. But I'm going to try to do all of these above it so we can just use one number line instead of redrawing the number line. So here I land on it, and it's going to be positive 2 equals 2. Next one, I'm going to go ahead and erase these while I'm at it. So next one is 4 minus 6, okay? So I start with 0, go up 4. So I start here, go up to 4. And now I'm facing positive direction, but then I got a minus sign, so it means i got to go opposite. So i got to go down 6. When I go down 6, I land on negative 2. So that's negative 2, okay? Next one. I start on 0, but the first thing it tells me is I go down 6. So I have to go, remember I'm facing positive, but then I run into a negative sign first thing. So that means I go down 6, okay? And again, you want to face positive, 
you're, after even after you get there, you think, you think positive, but then, oh, I have another negative sign. So I go, go down four more. So that means that's going to land, you're going to land on negative 10. Okay? Next one, probably one of the harder ones, when you have those two negatives in the middle. Okay? I start in zero, but the first thing I counter is a negative four. So I got to go down four. Okay? Go down to four. Then I'm going to switch and turn positive because I'm going to hope for the best. But, oh, I got a negative sign. So I go, I start down that way. I start, I reverse, I'm head, headed down to the left side, to the left hand side. But then I got another negative, so I go back, so I face the other way. So now I got to go up six. Okay? And I land then on two because if you see you go up six, you go one, two, three, four, five, and six. You land on two. So my answer here is two, positive two. All right, now let's do another one similar. This time I start with six, okay? I start with zero, but then it's positive, so I go all the way up to six, okay? Then I'm thinking positive. I want to keep going to the right, but oh, I got a negative sign, so I turn and turn, go this way, but then I have another negative sign, so I go back to the right again, and I go up four. So that means I land on ten, okay? Next one. Start with negative six this time, okay? Zero and then negative six. Okay, I'm going to face positive again, but oh, I've got a negative sign, so I start, okay, maybe I have to go to the left, but then i got another negative sign, so that means, oh, i got to go back to the right. i got to go four to the right. So I land this time, if you go one, two, three, four, you land on negative two. Okay, and those are the hardest. Those ones are the hardest. Four, five, six, I mentioned them at the end. Okay, two more to go. I've got, now I have negative four, so I zero to negative four. Okay, and then I think it positive, but then, oh, I got a minus sign, so I got to keep going that direction. I go down to six down, six more down, and that's going to be equal to negative 10. Okay, next one is, I'm going to start with, I'll just keep those up there. I start with zero to four, okay, and then I'm face, facing positive, but then I got a negative, so I got to go to the left, and then another negative, so I go back to the right, up six. So I go all the way up to six, and that gives me a positive 10. All right, so... We, under, we see here that 4, 5, 6, and 8 are kind of the tricky ones because they have that double negative, so to speak. They have a minus and negative, minus and negative, minus and negative, minus and negative. We sort of took away the negative, but it's kind of like taking away a debt, which is a positive thing. It's a good thing. We ended up moving in the positive direction for those four problems. So that will help us to understand the rule. When we think about the rule, we think about subtraction is not, if you think about it, as adding the opposite is really what we did in those, in those four examples where we had the two negatives. So in a sense, we can subtract integers without really subtracting because we're really going to be adding as we do. So we, we don't without really subtracting as we do for regular numbers. Okay, let me show you an example. Example one, if I had negative 8 minus a negative 2, and again, I have the parentheses or not, it doesn't matter. That's my minus sign. Well, if I think of minus or subtraction as adding the opposite, I'm going to add this here. I'll let me use a different colored pen so you can really see it. Um, okay, it was minus here, okay, and I'm going to add, change this to adding, the opposite. Well, the opposite of negative 2, the opposite of the very next number, is positive 2. So I have, now I have, now I'm adding the numbers, and now I know the rule for adding. Like signs add, like signs add. Unlike signs subtract this time, so 8 minus 2 is 6. Unlike signs subtract this time and keep the higher sign, so that answer is negative 6. Let's do another one. 4 minus a negative 2. Well, remember now, that's adding the opposite. Okay, so now I have like signs add. They're both positive. Like signs add, like signs add, add and keep the sign, so it's positive 6. Okay, here I just have the minus sign. There's not another negative, but watch what happens. If I think about minusing, I think about adding the opposite. Well, the opposite, that's a positive 8. The opposite of positive 8 is negative 8. So now I have 4 plus a negative 8. Well, unlike signs subtract this time, 8 minus 4 is 4 and keep the higher sign, and that's negative. Okay, so the easy, that may be kind of confusing, and I understand if it is. So probably an e the easiest way to think about it is keep change change, or KCC. So here's how you, we can do it if we do it that way. We have our three things. We have our first number, our, su our subtraction sign, and then our second number. So we put K under the first number, because that guy stays the same. That's negative 7, so he keeps the same, negative 7. We change this minus sign to a plus sign. We change this negative 5 to a positive 5. So what we're really doing is we're going negative 7 plus 5. It's the same thing as negative 7 minus a negative 5. So unlike sign subtract this time, it's 2, and keep the higher sign, the answer there is negative 2. Okay? Let's do the next one. 2 minus 8, we keep, change, change. So we keep the 2, 
We change that to positive, and we change this positive 8 now to a negative 8. So now we apply the positive rules, the adding rules. Unlike sign, subtract this time, it's 6, and keep the higher sign. Okay, last one. And this is, what, this is where it's going to come in handy because with the smaller examples, smaller numbers, you can kind of either do them in any one of the models. But when you get big numbers like this, it's really hard to do 40 chips or 40 heaps or something. So you want to really apply the rule. So we do keep, change, change. So I keep it to negative 40. I change that minus sign to a plus sign. And the 66 is a positive 66, but I want to change it now to a negative 66. So I got like sign. So now we're going to use our plusing rules. Like signs add, like signs add, so 40 plus 60 is 100, so 40 plus 66 is 106. Like signs add, like signs add, add and keep the sign, so the answer is going to be negative 106. All right? So make sure you do these, this rule only when you see a subtraction sign in between the two numbers, not when you see a plus sign. When you see a plus sign, we use the rule that we've already learned, the jingle bell rule.